Welcome to Bite Size Chemistry. Today is our final episode in our thermodynamics unit, and this is where we're going to talk about Q equals MC delta T, or sometimes you hear this called Q equals M cat. And this is an equation that talks about the amount of heat transfer. So, and it gives us a numerical value for it. And it's a super simple equation, but in order for us to know how to use it, we need to know what the variables stand for. So our first variable Q stands for heat transfer, or amount of heat transfer. Or heat energy. Okay. M stands for mass. Oftentimes this is given in kilograms, but it could be in grams. C is the specific heat. And specific heat is how much energy it takes to raise that substance up by one degree Celsius, all right? And the thing about specific heat is that it's specific or unique to each item. Meaning every single item or every single substance has a different specific heat value. And it's important because oftentimes they'll give it to you in the problem. You need to make sure you use the correct one. And then our last variable is the delta T. Now delta T, the delta means change. And so delta T is the change in temperature. And this is tricky because oftentimes you have to find or calculate the delta T uh, value before you do the problem. In order to calculate the delta T, all you have to do is take your final temperature, so temperature final, and subtract it from your temperature initial. Well, that's how you get delta T. Or if the problem's really nice, it'll just say, hey, the change in temperature was this many degrees Celsius. Now. Big deal, temperature has to be in degrees Celsius. So make sure you keep your temperature in that, okay? All right, let's look at a couple practice problems, like ways that you can be asked these uh, Q equals MC delta T questions. So this first question here says, a 250 gram sample of water is heated from 22 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. How much heat energy, or Q, is absorbed by the water during this process? Okay, a few things I want to take note here. First is I want to look at my mass and my temperature and make sure that my units match. So this specific heat says it's in grams per degree Celsius. I have grams here. I have degrees Celsius here, so that's all good. The second thing I want to do is write out my equation. So Q equals M. C delta T. And then I'm going to list those variables down the side and plug in what I know. Okay. So a 250 gram sample. Okay. Well, grams is a mass unit. So I'm going to go ahead and put 250 here. It's heated from 22 degrees to 75 degrees. So this is my delta T. And remember, delta T is the change. So I need to do my final temperature, which is 75 degrees Celsius and subtract it from my initial temperature, which is 22 degrees Celsius, to get my delta T. So 75 minus 22 is going to equal 53. So 53 degrees Celsius is my delta T. And it says specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. All right, so I see heat capacity, so that is my C. So this is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. All right which means I'm solving for Q. That is my leftover variable. So now all I have to do is just plug these values in and solve. So M is gonna be 250. So this is Q equals, or 25, 250, yep, 250, times C, which is 4.18, times delta T, which is 55, or 53. All right, plugging that all into the calculator, we get a Q value of 250 times 4.18 times 53. 
I get a Q value of 55.385 joules. Q is always measured in joules, so just be mindful of that. All right, kind of a fun fact here, because this is a positive value, so technically this is positive 55, I know that this reaction is endothermic, meaning that heat was put into the system or energy was put into the system. And that makes sense because my problem says I went from 22 degrees Celsius, which is a cooler temperature, to 75 degrees Celsius, which is hotter. So I put energy into that system to raise the heat up. All right, let's try one more. So this one states a piece of aluminum with a mass of 100 grams absorbs 3,150 joules of heat. The specific heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.900 joules per grams degrees Celsius. What is the temperature change of the aluminum? So this one's a little bit different because we're not actually solving for Q. We're solving for a different variable. So all that means is we need to manipulate our equation a little bit. So first, I'm going to write out my equation. Whoops. Q equals MC delta T. I'm going to write my variables down the side. And plug in what I know. So delta T, I don't know. That's actually what we're solving for. So I know that's going to be in degrees Celsius. My C is 0 0.900 joules per grams degrees Celsius. My M is 100 grams. And then my Q is through positive 3150 joules. Now I'm going to plug these in to my equation. And so that gives me 3150 equals 100 times 0 0.900. And we don't know delta T, so we'll just call it X. All right, now we just do algebra, right? In order to get x by itself, I need to divide both sides by whatever 100 times 0 0.0 or 0 0.9 is. So I'm just going to do 100 times 0 0.900, 100 times 0 0.900. I'm going to simplify this a bit, so this is going to become 3150 over, okay, Calculator 100 times 0.9 gets me 90 equals x. Fraction bar tells me I need to divide, so 3150 divided by 90, and I get a value of 35. Because I was solving for delta t, that means my delta t is 35 degrees Celsius. And that's all there is to it. Just simple algebra, reading the problem, and plug in what you know. All right, we'll see you next time on Bite Size Chemistry. Bye!